Okay, so I wanted to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Bible, Balak and Balaam, which is in Numbers chapter 22. So the story starts off with Balak. He's the king of the Moabites, and he becomes afraid because he sees a great number of Israelites coming into his town. So he remembers how the Israelites defeated the Amorites and took over their land. So he was afraid that the same thing was going to happen in his land. So he has messengers to call this guy named Balaam, who's a sorcerer, and he's known for his blessings and his curses against people. So he tells Balaam that the Israelites are threatening him. He also says that the Israelites are too powerful for him. And he wants Balaam to curse the Israelites so he can drive them out of his land and defeat them. So he even sends messengers to pay Balaam to curse the Israelites. So Balaam tells the men, you know, stay overnight. I'll talk to the Lord and see what the Lord says. And the Lord comes to Balaam and says, what's going on? Who are these men? What do they want? Balaam's like... Uh, this guy named Balak, he wants me to curse the Israelites. And he just basically told the Lord the same exact message that Balak told him. So the Lord says, no, don't go with them. The, these people are blessed. Do not curse them. So Bal oh. Balaam goes back and tells Balak's people, I can't go with you. The Lord will not allow it. Balak ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> he tells Balaam, you know, don't let nothing stop you from coming with me. He is like he doesn't even have any regard for the Lord. He obviously didn't know who the Lord was. But then he promised Balaam that he would promote him and make him like a man of great honor he just kept promising all these different things and he kept saying like if you do this for me I'll give you this I'll give you oxen and I'll do this and that for you so Balaam tells Balak and his men that he cannot go against what God has said which is not to curse the Israelites but yet Balaam says well let me see what the Lord says so it's like it seems like Balaam was tempted somewhat because when you think about it why would he keep saying well let me see what the Lord says it's like once the Lord says whatever you know whatever he's trying to tell you that's it you don't have to keep you know well let me see what he says he said no but let me see if he'll change his mind no <laughs> no the answer is no so Balaam told Balak and his men that he could not go against what the Lord said, which was not to curse the Israelites. But yet Balaam said, well, just wait here overnight. I'll see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. Now, it kind of seems like Balaam, I don't know, maybe he was tempted because God initially said, no, don't go with these men, you know, don't curse the Israelites. But yet Balaam kept trying to see what he was going to hear from the Lord. I guess he thought the Lord would change his mind. So God told Balaam, if the men come for you, go with them, but you're going to say what I tell you to say. And so the next morning when Balaam decided to go, God was angry and I remember when I first read this I was like well why is God angry you told him to go but I realized that he didn't have the right motive he I guess his heart wasn't in the right place so as he's going to meet with these men he has some trouble with his donkey so this donkey that he's ridden his whole life just starts acting up so I think about three times he tries to get the donkey to move, but the donkey doesn't move because the donkey sees an angel of the Lord, which is blocking his path. And Balaam becomes so angry, he hits the donkey. And the donkey actually starts talking like, why are you hitting me? You know, what? what's your problem? And so 
the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and Balaam was able to see the angel of the Lord and he realized that he had sinned and that his motives was not in the right place. Maybe he thought he could get some of Balak's wealth and the things that he was promising. God again tells Balaam, you know, go ahead, meet with the men, but you're still going to say what I tell you to say. So there's this verse. So it's Numbers 22, 41. And it reminds me of when the devil tempted Jesus. He took him up on a mountain and he was like, look at all this below. Look at all these kingdoms and all of this. This can all be yours if you just worship me. Bow down and just worship me. So this verse 41 says, and it came to pass on uh, the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. So Balak took Balaam to three different locations with the hopes that these different locations would help him change his mind and curse the Israelites after all. But that didn't happen because Balaam followed the Lord's instructions and he kept saying, I cannot you know curse these people they are blessed this is what the lord says i cannot reverse it and each at each location balaam had told balak to build seven altars so i'm thinking that balak built these altars each time i guess with the hopes that he was going to get what he wanted which was to have the israelites curse but that didn't work it's just really something how desperate Balak was. But it also reminds me of how sometimes people, sometimes people who are against you, they can be that desperate. They might build an altar. They might pray or do witchcraft or things like that. Like just to have you cursed or <laughs> just so you won't, succeed it's just crazy but that's what it reminds me of but I like this story because no matter how many times Balak tried no matter how many things he offered Balaam there was still nothing that he could really do once God said that the people were blessed that was it it was no changing it there's a particular verse that says that and that's Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So no matter how many times this guy built altars, no matter how many times he tried to offer Balaam money, none of his attempts didn't work. And that reminds me of how the enemy, so the enemy is the same way. You know, he might attack us with different things. He might accuse us or condemn us of different things. But no matter how many times he tries, no matter what type of attempts or attacks that he makes, he will fail every time. Same thing with people who might be plotting against you you know no matter how many times they might try they will fail every time as long as you have the Lord Jesus Christ on your side they will fail every single time but another thing that I noticed with this story was that Balak you know he was wealthy he had a lot of money uh, I guess he was well known had a lot of clout if that's the right word some people think that because they are wealthy or have money they have power and maybe they do to a certain extent but you don't have the power of God so you're not in control of everything there's only so much that you can do but you are not in control of everything and you cannot determine somebody's destiny no matter how many people you try to pay with bribes or whatever, you know, it, every attempt will fail. 
So just because you have a lot of money does not mean that you are in control of everything. Another thing that I thought about as I was reading this story, Balak and Balaam, was temptation. So throughout the story, we see Balak offering Balaam all these different things like, I'll do this for you, I'll give you honor, and I'll promote you, I'll make you great. And the thing is with temptation, when something is not, it might look good, but it might not really be right. It's not right on the inside. So with temptation, there's always some type of consequence to that. There's always some type of string attached. So it's, it's never right. There's never anything right. It might seem right, but there's never really anything right about temptation there's an interesting verse chapter 24 verse 11 Balak is angry with Balaam and he says I asked you to curse these people and you've and you've blessed them three times and so he says something like I was gonna promote you but the Lord prevented that the Lord kept you back from great honor <laughs> It's just amazing. This guy really thought he had the power. Be I guess because he was so wealthy, right? He thought that he had power to have somebody cursed. He thought that he had the power to promote and make somebody great. But we all know that promotion only comes from the Lord. So your money can only do so much. So another... Thing that I noticed when I read the story in the beginning um, Balak it says that he was fearful of the Israelites because it was so many of them and he was just afraid that they would take over his land because of what he'd seen them do before so that reminded me of how sometimes people are threatened by God's people you know, God spoke these great things over us. He made different promises for his people. And you have people that are threatened by that. And it often comes out in their behavior. It often comes out in the type of things that they say. And like Balak, you have some people that will stop at nothing to make sure that you don't succeed or excel in life i hope i'm not making it sound like you know we're helpless and no that is not it we are you know we decide how our future goes i mean god is in control but we don't have to let people stop us from doing what we're called to do i just want to end this video by inviting you to develop a relationship with the lord jesus christ because we're living in some really dangerous and crazy times right now. I pray that you will invite him into your heart and just ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Ask him to change you. And once you invite him in, you will hear from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. Once you invite the Lord in, he will cleanse you of all sin and he will make you whole again so i pray that this message overall has blessed you or maybe gave you some insight maybe about things going on in your life well bye for now and have a great day